Mm -hmm. All right, hello everybody. This is Tiffany with The Private Room and I am here with Miss Joan Baxter Randall and we have one of her art authors. I always wanna put R in there. Authors, mm -hmm. <laughs> Jarvis, is it Swanson or Swanson? Swanson. Swanson. Like, like okay. the dinners. Got it. <laughs> I was just about to say, like the like the TV dinners. Um, okay. All right. Great. And then we also have. It looks like we have uh, Mr. Fields coming on with us right now. So I am really, really excited, um, Miss Joan. I have been watching you and following you for years. Um, I am um, an author myself, and um, I remember talking to you about you know your different services and your coaching, and I've been following you ever. since. So when I saw this, all of these handsome men wrote a book that co-authored your anthology. I was like, we have got to get Ms. Joan on and these men on so we can find out what is going on with the man, image in the mirror. Let, yeah. Let's find out what's going on here. So Ms. Joan, mm -hmm. tell us about you. First off, I want to learn about you and Anyone that doesn't know you, which you're pretty, you're a celebrity in your own right. So, yeah. I'm <laughs> um, so tell us about you, what you do, and then introduce the anthology to us. Absolutely. So I'm Joan T. Randall. I am a speaker, author, uh, minister, and also uh, the creator of a mastermind group called Books to Business and Beyond. I founded Victoria's U Press Publishing Company because after I'd written like my 14th book, um, people were asking me if I could help them publish. And it's something I did not want to do. And I said, absolutely not. I just right. want to do it for myself. I don't want to do it for anybody else. But who knows when God has you purpose to do something, no matter how much you run, there comes a time when your purpose collides with you, like smack you right in the face and That's you got to get, get, get going at it. So that was how Victoria's U Press started. Uh, what we do at Victoria's U Press is we take the guesswork out of the writing process. We take the fear out of publishing and we empower individuals to own their story through the power of the pen so that they can build a business, they can build a brand, they can create legacies, um, and they will be able to sustain or supplement their income if they have a nine to five or they're doing something else. So pretty much that, that's what I do. And that's what we do here at Victoria C Press. Nice, nice. So for someone like me, so I am um, self-published, but I realized the first time that I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I wanted to self-publish because it was my, it was a personal story. And I was just like, I don't want to give this to someone else, but I was happy with the results. Published my second book. I haven't done nothing because I just don't have time. Right. So it's just like, even though I think it's a good book, I know it's a good book. I just don't have time to push it. So like for, for, self-published authors do you provide services to, to authors who you know we want to have some control but we need that extra like marketing experience and all that kind of stuff do you help authors that have already published their books you know kind of propel a little bit further than they are <laughs> so the thing about us that makes us unique is that we offer coaching um services when you uh, you know, come with our company to publish. And okay. one of those services is the marketing strategy and the best selling strategy. So we have specific things in place for marketing and best sell and the best seller to hit the best seller list. Um, nice. We see at our company, we see books as a business. It's never just a book. So right. if you're going to write a book just to write a book, you mm -hmm. might not be a fit for us, right? right. You've got to right. write a book to build a business. You've got to write a book to take your brand to the next level. You got to write a book to build credibility. You have to write a book to say that you are the expert at what you do day in and day out. You've got to write a book because you're passionate about your purpose. Right. So everything for us is built on books to business model. So yes, yes we encourage authors to what's the next step? And how can you uh, add seven streams of income to your one book? Right. Um, and even with uh, the anthology for the men, 
Um, you know, it's an anthology. So one of the things we encourage them to do is just communicate with each other. You know, they can partner with each other. As I was saying earlier behind, you know, in the green room that two of the authors are start, are launching a podcast together. But, um, and when we did Image in the Mirror one, it was 20 women and it, it took that project took about 10 months to complete. Mm -hmm. And when we were done, our company um, provided a landing page um, and a logo for every woman that was a co-author and 17 out of the 20 women launched the bid their business the one month after the book came out. Nice. That nice. Many women launched new businesses in 2021. Um, nice people that were in the anthology so yeah it's something that but yeah to provide uh, marketing services yes we do that for someone who may have published and never really you know gotten past the 100 books that they may have sold we do have a marketing system in place that we um, help people who did not publish with us but need that push got it got it okay so yeah I'm definitely because I know that the, the book that I have like just sitting right now is going to be a game changer for me to make sure that the my advocacy work and everything I do in the community is going to, this is kind of a next step to it. So yeah. I am definitely going to be reaching out. I'm on your website right now. Tell, tell everybody your website so they can go ahead and start looking to see what you offer because yeah. you offer some good services. I do. It is victoriousupress.com and it's victorious. Mm -hmm. Not Victoria, but victorious, like victory. Yeah. And you know, I'm a domestic violence survivor. So um, you know, that's where the whole vic victory came in, victim, victor, victorious. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. where that came from. So right. yeah, it's just victorious you have press and you can find everything that we do there um, on our website. Okay, yes, I saw that. So you offer consultations, the strategies. I also saw about how to, um, it looks like how to actually do your own anthologies. I think I saw that yes, on there as well. Yes, yes, yes. yes. absolutely. I yeah. love it. I love it. Okay, so tell me, tell us about the Image in the Mirror anthology. Where what started that, and kind of tell us because this is book three. Three, yeah. yeah. So tell us. I want to hear from one, two, and three. Like what? <laughs> what was behind it? Yeah. So um, I had an I had a encounter with God in 2019, and I was in a very dark place. My sister in law was dying of cancer, and she was very young, and she had been in our family for 25 years. My brother and her got married in their 20s and she had just turned 50. She was diagnosed uh, with cancer and we thought she had beat it and it came back more aggressive than before. So here was this beautiful young woman. I think 50 is still young and she's dying. And it went from stomach cancer to blood, to brain, to everything. It just overtook her body. She was 68 pounds mm -hmm. and she was unrecognizable. And I went to go visit her in uh, September, 2019. And I thought my heart was gonna just fall out of my body. And mm -hmm. so I found myself in this deep depression because she was like our sister. Cause for 25 years we were together. It was like our sister. Yeah. And um, I was in such a dark, deep depression. And I remember saying to myself, I, I can't fill the hole in my heart. And it's not just the death of my, or, well, she hadn't died at that point, mm -hmm. but it wasn't that she was, was in that state was, I felt like I didn't have any fulfillment, not from my entrepreneur, you know, what I was doing in business or even in my family, my husband couldn't fill the place. My kids couldn't fill the place. There was just an emptiness mm -hmm. and I didn't know where the emptiness came from. Mm -hmm. And I was just searching and I was walking one day and all I could remember saying, you know, Lord, I'm available to you. Mm -hmm. um, just fill the space because I want to be yours. I want to be used by you because what I've been doing is not being used by you. It's the, you being used by me. <laughs> and so right. I wanted just to find something to fill that emptiness. I couldn't touch it. And even if I, you know, wrapped something around my waist, nothing could fill that hole. And it was right at the end of my walk. I got a phone call and I got the phone call and I felt like God had answered 
my question or answered my plea based on that phone call. And I'm like, wow, God, you didn't even give me an hour. You answered me because he saw my desire. Mm -hmm. And um, I got in my car and I drove to Chick-fil-A. I love their fries. And I drove to Chick-fil-A. <laughs> And I'm in the line for Chick-fil-A and I heard DNA and I'm like, DNA. And I'm thinking, why would that just pop up in my spirit DNA? Right. And I heard the words dominion, my name and authority. And I'm like, wait a minute. DNA is blood type, right? That connects right, right. to your ancestors. Right. And right. I pulled out of the Chick-fil-A line. I didn't I just pulled out. I'm like, I'm not going to get no fries. I got to write this down. And so I pulled out my phone and I wrote D equals dominion N equals mm. name A equals authority. Mm. Like, oh my God. The Holy spirit just told me that I am created from his DNA. Right. So I ran home and I, I went to Genesis one verse 26 through 28 and I found it. And I'm like, Lord, you said that you have made us, you made us in your art, your image. And mm -hmm. we have your dominion and we have authority, but where did it say that you gave us your name? I couldn't find it. And then I just started digging through and I went to first John three and verse one. Mm -hmm. And it said, because he loved us so much, he gave us his name. And I'm like, oh my God, I found it. And right. so I went, it's like something said, go to the mirror. And I went and I stood in front of the mirror and I'm looking at myself and I'm seeing my physical self. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I heard the Holy Spirit said, close your eyes because when you open your eyes, it's sight and you're seeing yourself in the physical, mm -hmm. but close your eyes while you stand in the mirror and you'll see me and you'll see you how I see you. Wow. And that was it. That's a beautiful that thing. That was where the image in the mirror came from. So yeah. my goal was to wrap that book for myself, mm -hmm. but then I had a summit and I don't know why I said to the ladies, I had about 50 ladies. It was a virtual summit and there was about 50 ladies on the summit. And for some reason I said, Hey guys, you know what? I'm writing a book and it's called the image in the mirror. And it's seeing myself as how God sees me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to be a part of it? That right. was it. And we had women after women just signing up. 20 women out of the 50 women that was on that summit signed up to be a part of the Image in the Mirror one. So wow. that was where it started. And I thought it was a one undone. But then, <laughs> no. <laughs> but then the people who did not join Image One after they saw the success, they're like, you got to do another one. So we right. did Image Two, and that was called Manifesting a Deferred Dream. And right. it was amazing. And we made a movie out of that one. Okay. Yes, Ma'am, I executive produced a movie out of that one. And that's where Jarvis came. Jarvis came to see the showing of the premiere. And okay. so I connected with Jarvis. And then from there, you know, it's like uh, one of the guys said to me, well, do you do this for men? Do you do these book for men? Because that was right. like my ninth anthology. And I said, no, I've never done one with men. And then right. that was how that came about. And so wow. this one is called The King in Me Transforms the Man I See. So, wow. And I'm like, that's it. I'm done. Three. And it's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> but you can't, 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 can't stop now. You can't. <laughs> Oh the trilogy that's it yeah wow wow okay this is this is so exciting so um we have the the king's panel which i was telling you um while we were getting loaded up here um the king's table on the private room is an all-male panel and i thought that it was important for um men to have a platform on my podcast because i'm a woman and i have a son you know, I can't teach my son how to be a man. I can't teach my son, you know, those important male things. I, those are things that I can't do for him. So I, I, I've always had a nice, strong support system around me that's made up of strong men. But so I've learned when I had him and then I became a single mom that I need more strong men around my, my yeah. son. So I've always valued having strong male think figures around, especially for our children because they coming from education and coming from the school system, 
there are studies that show that men in the community that are advocates, that are teachers, that are, you know, even down to ministers and, you know, janitors, fathers, they oh, make, yes. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they make a, such a bigger impact. And that's not taking anything away from women. But when you have men in these positions with our children, they tend to make a much bigger impact because yeah. of their authoritative state. And because, you know, they're, they, they have, men are born to be leaders. They are born to be the head of the household. They're born to lead. And so when you have men in the community who are giving of themselves and their time and their expertise and so forth and so on, it makes a, a big, a big impact. Right. So I started the King's Table and um, it's been great. We've had our third episode. And so when I saw this, I'm like, wait a minute, this, this is great. Yeah. This is great because I see that you have some very um, strong men that um, co-authored and worked together for this book. Um, and I just, I really, really just believe in the power of men being a voice in the community. Um, I know that you're an advocate and a survivor too. Mm -hmm. And being a survivor and an advocate of domestic violence, I just, I love when we have men in the fight. Yeah you always see men as the abusers, you know, you don't see them as the ones that are fighting against domestic violence, who are right. speaking up about, about domestic violence. You're seeing it more now, but yeah. 10 years ago, you did it. Um, so I just love that men are out here just, just as much as us women out here advocating for causes that affect our community, especially our families and our children. That's a, that's a right. big deal. Um, okay. So we have two of your co-authors on here. Um, we have Mr. Uh, Jarvis, and then we have, is it Dwan? I want to make sure I'm saying names correctly. Yeah, Dwan. Got it, got it, got it. And Ms. Randall, I hear a, a, a twang. Is that is that an island, like a Caribbean? What, what's, I what's... sure am. I'm okay. cool runnings, I'm man. I'm, I'm hearing cool it. runnings, cool yeah. runnings straight from the island of Jamaica. Okay, I hear it. And I know it's not, a, it wasn't a Southern twang. It was, it was something no. else going on over there. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> All right. And I thought I heard something in Jarvis too. Maybe I, maybe I don't know. I thought I heard <laughs> No, I, maybe I went to Cameroon a couple of weeks ago. Maybe I stole okay. it. Okay, you brought it back uh, with you. Cameroonian Douala. <laughs> got it, got it. Okay, okay. Because I was like, wait a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so... Um, Let's, let's hear about you, Jarvis. Tell us, um, you know, who are you? What's your background? You know, all that good stuff. And how did, how did that bring us up to you co-authoring um, this anthology? So, I mean, you know, I, I, I always say that the, the first thing that I am is a, is a husband. Um, I have uh, an incredible wife and I am a, um, that's my first position is, is to be her husband. And then uh, I'm a father. Uh, four beautiful children. Um, grateful for them. Um, then I'm a I'm a friend, but the most important position I have is that I am a son of the living God and uh, serving, um, uh, allowing Him to use my life to serve Him is my uh, most important calling. And so, with that, I'm always looking to allow uh, Him to have impact. Um, with my life. And so I've always been open about uh, where he brought me from and then where he's brought me to. And so um, I've always done that on a very much on a personal, personal level, wherever I could share that I've always been transparent about um, my life before Christ and my life after Christ, because, you know, it's two completely different lives. You know? um, so I grew up with, a, a, with, you know, with some struggles with my, you know, my father was a heroin addict. I've always struggled with female relationships um, just because um, I wasn't taught how to, how to care for women, how to have a proper uh, relationship as a man and keeping that relationship in its proper context. And so um, growing up, you know, I, I've always really uh, liked women, um, but I, didn't know how to keep those relationships in, in the right in the right perspective and so i i abused the relationships um and so once i began this walk with christ and he showed me and taught me 
how to have caring and loving relationships with not only my wife, but with my friends and my sisters and my mothers and my daughters. Um, I've been able to have some really great coaching and um, uh, mentoring relationships with, with, with some um, wonderful females who, like you said, just kind of don't always have that positive male voice in their lives. And God has allowed me to have that position in, in, um, in some women's lives. And, and I'm grateful for that. And then I'm also grateful for my wife who allows me to have that, um, that impact. And so I was minding my own, <clears throat> my own business at, at church one day. And one of the co-authors, um, that had written, um, or co-authored the image in the mirror too. She said that Joan was looking for some men and she, she said somebody told her that I had a story and I, I didn't really know who would have told her that, <laughs> but, um, she told me about Joan and she told me about the, the premiere of the documentary for the image in the mirror too. Mm -hmm. I came out and seen it and I was like, just, just blown away at, at how, um, transparent these women were with their stories, mm -hmm. how open they were with their stories. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and how it just impacted the audience. And so, uh, when she asked, you know, Hey, you guys want to do this? I was like, I'm in, I'm in. Um, I don't, and it's funny because I said yes before I really knew what I was saying yes to. <laughs> and sometimes that's how you got to do it because <laughs> if you realize you're about to walk on water, you maybe won't step out of the boat. And so, um, yeah. it's, it's been a, it's been a it's been a ride, but I've I've definitely enjoyed it and I think it's really just the beginning. Right, right. Well, I really appreciate the fact that you gave those that kudos to your wife. Um I I admire that and I think that that is a beautiful a beautiful thing to to do. You said that, you know, let me say this first, you know, let me give give credit to my wife and let me let me let you know that you know my wife number one i i truly appreciate that um that's not something that you hear a lot of unfortunately in today's time marriages are just a, being attacked right now and um it takes a strong strong foundation and it takes two strong people to really um get through marriage and i, I hate to say get through but marriage is hard. Like it's, 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 it's a job in itself. Um, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of prayer and it takes for you, honestly, just to have a really good foundation. And, um, it sounds like your foundation starts with, you know, your belief system and your spirituality. And that is, that's just a beautiful thing. Um, God should be in your relationship. So I really appreciate you, you, you starting that off with that. Um, and I'm sure that she appreciates that too. So you said yes, and then you realize what all was involved. Yes. <laughs> so how has this journey been for you? Is this, well, first of all, is this your first time writing a book or being an author? Is this your first it time? Is. Okay, it is. so you just jumped right in the boat and started wading the waters and, and everything. So how, how has this journey been for you? And was this like, I am never doing this again? Or are you ready to write another book? <laughs> no, I, I definitely am ready to, I, I wouldn't, I don't want to, let me take a step back. I'm not ready <laughs> to write another <laughs> book. <laughs> but I know that um, writing another book is in my near future. Um, the pro, I, I, to be honest, um, if, if it felt impossible before having the conversation with Joan, but the, the strategy that she has, it's a well laid out plan. So you're not trying to do everything. You you have this to do now. And you focus on this thing you have to do now. Um, and even in that, she kind of gave us a, a writing strategy and, um, you know, how long you should invest in writing. And just because of her, experience you walk with a different level of confidence not in yourself but in her experience you know yeah. i just left a premiere of a book that she walked you know i think it was maybe 18 women on that book 16 women and one man 
Okay. Yeah. So it was like, you know, if, if 16 people, then I just watched them mm-hmm. walk, that they have a, that they have the evidence of walking through that process. Then I, I walk into the process with her confidence and not my confidence. And so I really didn't think about whether or not I could do it. It was more like, okay, this is what she's saying. Do, do this part. Yeah. That that makes a lot of sense. So you felt confident in the journey and in, you know, the the yes that you gave um, because you knew that you had a, you, you had the evidence of success in front of you. Absolutely. Nice. nice. That's a good testimony. That's a that's a, an amazing testimony. OK, so now the book has been written and boom, Amazon best selling author. So now I find out the writing is the easy part. Okay. All the right. The hard part for me, now I, and I can only speak for me, the hard part for me is now that the the story is out there for public consumption, it's letting it go, like knowing that you don't own it anymore. Like it's okay. it's out there for people to interpret the art however they interpret it. And yeah. okay. that's the, you know, that's been like the 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 scary part. Um mm-hmm. But um, it's it's all a part of it, you know. It's it's it's, it's it, it really is the truth of of my experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the the best thing is, I know that the person that I started off as in the beginning of the journey in that in my chapter, I'm a different person at the end of that journey. And right. so anything that anybody might have to say, um, you're talking about an old version. And so come see the updated version. Yes, I love that. I love that. And um, I think, and I understand that because I know people have told me for years, Tiffany, you need to write a book. You need to write a book. You need to write a book about myself. And I'm just like, I can't write about myself. I don't know why. I, I, I've, I've, written, I've written books. I've written poetry. I've shared my story a million times in front of you know audiences and groups so forth and so on. But every time I sit down to write a book about me, I have not been able to do it. And mm-hmm. so um, I totally get that, you know, of, you know, you, you, once you write this book, you put it out the, in the universe, it's like, okay, your story's out there. Now what, what's about to happen? What back, you know, what, what, what are people gonna think and what are people gonna feel? So how has that experience been for you? The book is out there, people are reading it, people are, are forming their, you know, <laughs> their, their, their reviews. Of, of the book, but now they're also reviewing you too. So how has that been for you, your, 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 your wife, you know, your family, how has that been um, for you? So it's really new. Um, so I haven't, you know, got a ton of like uh, response personally um, from the book. Um, but I also know that culture tells us they, re- they want us to be perfect. Mm-hmm. But people really just want authenticity. And so yeah. Yeah. if nothing else, we, I was authentic to who I am and to my journey. Um, so uh, whatever happens, uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, I know that uh, God is in it with me. Um, so if something, if there's any turmoil or anything that comes up behind it, you know, in the end, it's going to be to my benefit. It might be rough waters initially, but uh you know, back to the walking on water thing, like, you know, with rough waters, that's when, that's when God can show up in a miraculous way. So. uh, Right. I love that. I'd love to address, I'd love to address that, Tiffany. um, Sure. Because a lot of times when we hold or hide the story is because of shame, right? For whatever reason, there is hesitation, there is apprehension, there is shame. You're thinking, what are people going to think about me, right? Right. But let me say this to you. The person who you have written that book for is going to accept it as their breakthrough. Mm -hmm. So don't ever worry about who is going to criticize worry about the person you wrote the book for the right. person that has been in your situation that now is going to get a breakthrough because you overcame it the that's person right. that's going through it now in which your book is going to help them leave or get out of there or change their life and the person that it's going to happen to down the road that can read your book and say whoa i recognize i'm in this i need to take stock of this and get out of here right, right. so it's never for 
the critical people. It is for the person who your book is there is going to be their breakthrough. It's going to change their life. It's going to make a difference in their life. And your book becomes a legacy. It is your story today. 50 years from now, it is history. Somebody's mm. going to pick up that book. The book might be done. Somebody might even do a, a book study on it, a Bible study on it, a class on it, right? Because mm. you went through the fire. You went through some storms. You did some awful things and God took you through that. And I think that when you write a book um, and the book is out there, you have been resurrected from whatever shame it was. So that's how I see a book like, you know, with stories that are painful because to be resurrected, you have to be buried, mm. right? To be mm -hmm. resurrected, you have to be buried. To come forth as a new creature, you have to be buried. A seed has to be buried underground to, to produce, right? So your story, if especially if it's painful or ugly, um, once you write and you, you keep it in, you're burying that, right? The minute you let it out, you're resurrected and that story will change lives. That's how I see it. So right. it don't matter who criticize it. The person who needs it is going to have it and that's going to be their breakthrough. That's yeah. Really yeah. Yes. Appreciate all of that. And I received all of that. Okay. So is there another anthology? Joan, or is this Listen, it? Is this I'm telling you, this is like my ninth one. I am anthologyed out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm okay. anthologyed out. I'm like, okay. <laughs> can I just say this? Um, dealing with the men is different than dealing with the women. And the reason why is the women, because I'm a woman, I understand women. I'm not a man, so I don't understand. And most importantly, they, their thought process are different from ours. So yeah. I did not go into this just as a publisher who published books. I went into this under a divine assignment, right? Because this book was not about me. It was about these kings. And right. so I studied the life of Deborah in the Bible because I wanted to understand how to approach men in grace in kindness and with respect mm. of them being kings, right? Okay. And so I studied the life of Deborah and how Deborah led Barak, who was the military commander of the children of Israel to win the war against the Canaanites. And it was her prophecy that God gave her the prophecy to win the war. But she knew as a woman, it was not her place to go in front of the battle. So she commissioned the um, Barak gave him the plan, gave him the blueprint and said, this is how you do it. And, and by the way, we have some women set up in several different places that is gonna help you take this, take this win, right? Okay. So mm -hmm. that story resonated with me. And I'm like, okay, so now I understand how I'm gonna help these kings get their story out, encourage them, um, and be graceful, be respectful, um, and never be become demeaning at all. My words could be a little sharp sometimes if they're taking too long to send me something, but it was always with a level of respect, and I always honor them. I always call them kings, and I'm always respectful, and that was a lesson for me in how to deal with men as well. Right. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, and I think that touches a little bit on me, um, you know, what I was saying earlier about having a son and knowing that I need to have strong male models around him because there's there's things I can't teach him. Right. I can teach him what kind of man I would like for him to be as his mother and as a woman, how I want him to be to other women and his wife. Because I talk to him all the time about when you get a wife this, when you get a wife that, and you know, being a gentleman and all that kind of stuff. But as his mama, he's going to receive that as this is the way I want you to treat women because yeah. I'm your mama versus yeah. a man saying, you know, this, this is what you should do, son. And this is how, how you be a man. And this is how you, it's a difference. And I realize that that, that is a difference. I know it's different. So I, I totally understand, you know, you going into the, into this, um, with that mindset, um, Mr. Fields, um, oh, hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm okay. How are you? I am good. I am good. Um, what, are you a first time author or is this your, um, 
or you know, are you uh, an expert at writing or all seven of them? All seven of no, them. No, this is my first time. time. All this seven is for men. All of them. Oh my goodness. And here's the thing: there were seven of them. They were all first-time authors, and they hit the bestseller in seven categories. Wow. <laughs> Yep, that's now, how we roll with God. <laughs> now, number seven is my favorite number. And so because yeah. you're a spiritual person, this young, I know you know the reason, um, you know, because in the Bible, seven means complete. So seven has always been my favorite number. It's on, I, I'm tattooed up. I got seven on me. When people ask me, what's your favorite number? Seven, what number are you trying to <laughs> um, So I, yeah, oh my goodness. This is, so this is not just, authors male authors getting together to write this book this is like uh divine um, yes it is this is powerful yeah yeah it's not just a collective of men you know sharing their stories this is this is about taking y'all to a whole different level <laughs> as men um sharing your story so um Juan how was it for you and how did you even get on this project tell us about that um, I got on this project through a mutual friend that that lost their son. Um, so that's how that's how I got connected to Joan and Victoria Sue Press. Wow. Okay. So tell us a little bit more. Um, the friend they told you about the book. Did they tell you about the 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 movie? Like how did how did this all come to be? for you um just telling me that i need you know maybe it would bring you know to help bring awareness to gun violence um i lost my son in march 5th of 2021 and going through a period of time you know just being in a dark place so <clears throat> just to get get his story out and let people know what kind of person he was mm -hmm. and some of the things that he did, you know, and his biggest thing was always helping people. Okay. And I don't think I asked Jarvis what his story was in the book. So for you, um, Dwan, your story, you're sharing, um, celebrating the life of your son in the book. Am I, is that correct? And is that what I'm understanding? Yes, um, the the title of, of my story was His Light Still Shine, Living for DJ. Mm, okay, okay. Um, I hate to hear about your son. Um, the last King's Table we had, we had Mr. Michael Smith on with us. Um, he lost his son to gun violence um, a couple of years ago. And so he started an organization himself to um, bring you know, light to gun violence, violence amongst um, African American men specifically, um, and then he's a charlatan, and I'm in Charlotte. So, um, you know, just talking about the violence and the increase in violence of youth these days. Um, these last couple of years, there's been a, a spike in uh, youth violence or violence between youths. Um, more and more youths, unfortunately, are killing one another, usually with a gun. Um, and so I, I, my condolences are with you, but I also want to say is thank you for sharing his story and sharing your story because that's not easy to share. I can't imagine losing a child. Um, and so when I do hear of parents who have lost children and now they're doing something about it, like they're, they're not just, they're not just keeping that to themselves. They're out here hitting the ground so that they can help other families and help other parents and try to avoid another child being killed. That's a, that's a big thing. That's very self-sacrificing. Um, and so I applaud you for, uh, for doing that. Um, Cause I know that that, that's, that, that has to be the unimaginable type pain to experience. Um, um, like I tell people, I mean, it's, <clears throat> it, it hurts, but it helps to talk about it, you know, and especially, you know, dealing with our youth. I mean, you know, we, you know, just a couple of years ago, how we talked about, you know, our youth being gunned down by police officers, but in the last three to four years, 
is our youth being gunned down by by our youth. Uh, right. Yes. <laughs> and especially, you know, our African American young men that are gunning down each other, you know, just because I don't like you, just you because you live here, you know, is when when it all boils down to it, I mean it's 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 stupid of them not liking each other because you're from here or mm-hmm. you know just because somebody else don't like you then I'm not gonna like you either I mean so it's it's pointless. ridiculous yeah 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 it, it's it's very sad um what is taking place um in our communities um right now especially with our youth um I'm a social worker by trade um I've kind of gone to the corporate side of um of health uh mental health but um it's happening every day. It's happening more and more. Um, we had AP Rich on about um, about six weeks ago where he was sharing his story where literally he was walking with his young daughter. I believe she was less than, less than three, four years old. He was walking in the park with her and someone that he knew who had a very petty argument earlier in the day, got out the car, walked up to him and shot him multiple times in front of his daughter. Oh my um, God. And then went around the block, came back in front of his daughter, in front of his mother's front step and shot him again. So it wasn't that he just came around. Oh, I see him. He pissed me off earlier and shot off at him. He came back. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, you know. Yeah, it's. I deal, I deal with it every day. I mean, I'm a, I'm a behavior counselor for a school district here in South Carolina. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just hearing some of the kids, you know, the stuff that they talk about on a daily basis, it's, you know, scary. it's it's scary. Very, very scary. Very scary. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking, too, because a lot of the reasons, and I asked him, I said, why, why do you think it escalated to this? And he said, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't even remember what the argument about was about. It was that petty. Wow. So, um. Yeah, it's, 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 it, I, you can't, I can't wrap my head around it otherwise to say that these, these kind of things start at home. It has, it starts at home and um, we really have to, have to uh, teach our children better values, better respect for, for other people, for other people's life. Um, and to let people that you don't have to resort to violence to, to resolve anything because now you're going to be spending life in jail over something that the other person didn't honestly didn't even remember. So now you shoot that somebody and kill somebody and that person don't even know the reason why you killed them. So, um, but what point did you really make? You, you didn't make any point. So, um, um, so thank you. I appreciate you sharing the story. Um, I would love to connect you with Michael, um, yeah. Smith that I just mentioned. Um, I think he would be an amazing connection for you. Um, Dwan, I think y'all would get along, not just because you both experience the same thing, but because both of you are strong men and you're, you're doing something about it. You're not just sitting and holding your stories to yourself. You're doing something about it and you're sharing, um, your story. So I, I truly appreciate that. Um, are you writing another book? Was this a, a one, one, one time thing? What you think? You think you're going to write another book or, um, this is, this is a this is a chapter that's unfinished. Yep. Because I wasn't allowed I'm not allowed to talk about you know certain things right now because um we're we start court next month. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I can't you know is is a lot of things that I wanted to put out but I can't put out. Right, right. So so this this is a unfinished chapter. This is a chapter. Got it. So y'all are going to court for your son's case, I'm assuming that's what you're talking about, right? Yes. Okay. So when that case is done, it sounds like that might be when we get a tell-all book or we get something that's a little, that's much more in depth, sounds like. It will be. Yes. And I am there for it. I hope you look me up and be like, Tiffany, remember I said I can't (laughs) talk about it now? And I'll be like, yep, you ready to talk about it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Um, well, I'm glad that you um, are able to get to court. Uh, Michael, um, his son's killer was never arrested. Um, so he 
unfortunately his son has had no justice is not getting any justice wow um, which has its own pain in itself um so i'm glad that at least you are able to seek some kind of justice for your son even though it won't bring him back um so i hope that it is successful i hope that you get the the um results that you want um and that the person that took your son away um they 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 get what due to them i'll leave it at that <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> sure you know i mean it, we're hoping we're hoping you know that all of them you know you know get what they deserve yes um yeah. we it, it'll never bring them back and that's why you know we push so hard i mean we have you know a couple foundations that are in his name um you know we this is our second year you know doing high school scholarships to seniors that are headed off to college you know to help you know cover some of the burden that that their parents you know won't be able to pay so just yeah. you know keeping his name alive of doing things and helping people you know that is brings a big honor to it yeah. right right yes yes well thank you so much um for sharing your story and your 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 son's story um i know that that takes a lot to do um and so i'm glad that you had the platform to be able to do it um i see mr christopher down there we want you to be safe can you talk to us <laughs> Christopher, I need you to park. I need you to park so you can have this conversation. Oh yes, ma'am. I'm fine. I'm not. I'm not holding that phone. I got a little helper with me. Okay, I was about to say we want you to be safe, but we want to hear you too. Yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, I wish I could have been here sooner, but thank you for the opportunity once again. Um, None of this is possible without these six other gentlemen and Miss Jones for being the magnificent lady that she is to <laughs> see that men need to speak for themselves. And most importantly, Coach Angie. Yeah. Nice, nice. I heard about Miss Angie. So we're going to have to get um, Miss Angie, Miss Randall back so that we can um, meet her. Um, so Christopher, tell us, how did you get into this mess? <laughs> <laughs> How did you get pulled into this? <laughs> uh, well, I, to be honest, years ago when I had my slip and fall in life um, and I was recovering and rehabilitating myself, my aunt always told me, you know, you should write a book. I never took it serious until I got to these last couple of years in my life and things happened to where I lost the benefits of my job and things of that nature. And I had to make some adjustments. And that's when I ran across some great people like Miss Heather of Pins and Proof and Malika Holloway of the Vis Visibility Proof Plant. And they led me down a lighted path to Miss Joan. And Miss Joan afforded the opportunity to me as well as these brothers, as you know, to write my story. She even helped me come up with the title of my chapter. Um, that's why I say Ms. Joan is so pivotal in this process and I, there's not enough gratitude that I can express for her experience and exposure. I love that. I love that. I like that. It sounds like we have men who have a story to tell. They had the courage to tell it and they were open to receive the guidance to do it successfully. I love that. Like that yeah. is... That is um, amazing because a lot of people have a story to tell, but they're too scared to, to tell it or they don't know yes, how to start, um, telling it. And then they go into it blindly. And even though they have a powerful story, it doesn't get out there. And that's what I was mentioning earlier is that I know that this book that I have, I'm sitting on right now is going to be something. I just need to make sure I do it right um, versus my first book. So. I am I'm, I'm happy to hear that all of you were open to sharing your story and receiving the guidance to do that from someone that obviously has great experience being a best selling author. <laughs> and, and you know what, um, Tiffany, another thing about it is I know that, um, you know, God purpose and put you in places 
where if you follow his prompting and you follow mm -hmm. his direction for your life, you're at the right place at the right time. Had mm. I not gone through domestic violence, had I not gone through homelessness, had I not experienced trauma, I don't know if I would be able to care for the story of these men in the way that I did. Mm -hmm. But because I understood pain, because I understand, um, you know, falling down, like, like totally, uh, you know, bottoming out, I was able to understand every person's story and brought out the best because remember it's their whole life story and I only needed 5,000 words. Mm -hmm. So in order for the impact of the story, we, I met with each of them to kind of frame how we want the hope, the body, the resolution and the conclusion of their stories. Mm -hmm. And so what you see is a snapshot of what happened over a number of years, but only in about 5,000 words. So even yeah. that was very strategic in how we placed and laid out the stories, you know, so that it's meaningful for the book. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I'm, yeah, this is so exciting. Um, so Christopher, um, I know for, uh, Dwan, he was saying that his story, um, is, uh, really, um, inspired by his son. Um, what is your, without giving too much, because we want people to read it, but without giving too much, what is the, the basis of your story? The basis of my story is second chances. Um, in life, you're given the opportunity to succeed or fail. And it's your choice to do so. But my mentor, uh, Mr. Adrian Hargrove, one of the guys who's been helping me build my character, he's always taught me that this ABC rule, action build confidence. And so that's how I realized that my life is about second chances. You know, I was told by a wise man, he didn't even know me. He just heard bits and pieces of my story. He said, you figured out the master class for being a survivor. And tie that into second chances is how my life has been built. Um, I didn't do the best in the beginning, but I learned how to finish strong and wise. Uh, it's, my life has truly been a miracle. Let me just say that without giving too much. And yes. I just had this saying that I live by, every wise man falls, but it is his will to get up that will determine how he stands. Mm. Whoa. Mm. <laughs> wow. Yes. Can you say that again? Can you say that one more time? <laughs> Every wise man falls, but it is his will to get up that determines how he stands. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need you to make sure you uh get some right <laughs> behind that statement. Hey, Christopher, that's something that you need to put on your your post tomorrow or later. Yeah, I was just about to say you need to you need to coin that one. That was powerful. Yeah. And, and I did clear, very clear. Yes. Yeah. I did. If you read the book, you'll see where it ties in together. I just okay. gave you a little snippet. Okay, so that that was a marketing tactic too. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, Christopher. Okay. All right. Nice. Oh, it's okay. Nice. Okay. So, do you see yourself writing another book, or was this just a, an experience that's going to propel propel you, and that's it? What do you think? Oh, no, I, I do. Initially, that's what I came to Miss Jones for. I have, I have dozens of uh, journals of material that I've written over the last six years. Okay. Like, you know, I experienced significant amount of pain over the last six years. I've lost my Mount Rushmore, mm. which is three of the most significant people in my life that have helped me make the pivot for change. I was what you call a prodigal son. Mm -hmm. always into something and my father for good bad and different saw me through to the other side of my mistakes but my mouth rushed more three people are my grandmother my brother and my best friend jeremy manigan mm -hmm. they all passed away or were either killed or passed away in the last six years so yeah wow so sorry to hear that yeah. wow thank you that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of loss um, in a short period of time. Um, so I'm um, again very sorry to hear that. Um, 
Okay, so you said you have a little helper with you. Are you a dad? Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. How does your family feel about you sharing your story? Because I think you said your grandmother told you you should share, share your story. Was that your grandmother or your aunt? It was my great auntie. Um, okay, okay. She, well, well, when I was incarcerated, um, I used to, I got a chance to learn the value of reading. And I was amazed at how much I was missing because I was hooked to the TVs. And so I would write letters. My aunt would write me and I would write her back. And after months of writing back and forth, she said, I've been meaning to tell you this, but your writing has progressed with uh, perfection. Every time you wrote a letter and sent it back home, I just didn't want to fill your head and get you the big head. And, uh, <laughs> She okay. was saying, hey, she said, hey, you know, when you get out of all this, maybe you should write a book. Okay. And I okay. was like, write a book? I said, nobody want to read my stories. <laughs> and, he, and you uh, about that? <laughs> and, and here I am. Right, right. Okay. So she spoke it into existence for you. Is she still with us? Which is, the, is oh, she? Yes. Okay. So what's she saying now? You didn't write the book. What's she saying? Yeah, she she forgot that she told me that I should write a book and I had to remind her. Okay. She asked me what inspired me and I said, you, sis. You, you don't remember when you told me that? And she, yes, and she thought I back it. and she was like, yeah, I do remember now. I love I didn't it. think you would listen. Nice, nice. So you listen, you, you done published the book and I'm sure she's very proud of you. I'm sure she's very proud of you. That's nice. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. So Miss Randall, I know we're missing a couple of people. Um, briefly tell us about, because it looks like uh, Jabari is a young guy. Tell us about Jabari really briefly and Abraham and Paul and Jean. Yeah. So Jabari is 18 years old and um, grew up with a single mother and his uh, chapter was called father by blood, but not by bond. And it really uh, tells his story about, you know, uh, sitting out, you know, by the window waiting on his dad because he, you know, time and time and time again, he would say it's coming for him. And then it, he ended up not coming. So at a really young age, I think it was either 11 or 12, he had made up in his mind that he will not sit and wait for him any longer, that he was giving too much energy to a person that was absent and not giving that same energy to his mother. Because what would happen is when his mother tried to say, I'm sorry, maybe he's working or doing something late, he would get angry as had his mom. So he was getting angry at the wrong person because his father wasn't showing up for him. Mm -hmm. And then he recognized that that was not fair to his mother who had been there the whole time and is always there for him and so he made up in his mind I think he was like 12 years old or 13 and say this is it I'm no longer going to rely on him not coming I'm going to focus my energy on the people that have been there for me you know in and out up and down all around and so it was his mother his grandmother and his grandfather and that was when he cut the ties emotionally and just started and and Jabbar is really unique. He graduated uh, high school um, May of last year. That was the same month the movie came out. He graduated high school uh, with a 4.0 GPA right. and um, like a 4.0 GPA with his associate's degree at 18. Wow. Yeah, wow. and now he's in college um, doing finance is, is major is finance. So he's very smart, very articulate, and he is president or vice president for everything you can think about in his first year in college. And so he saw his mom in the movie, in the documentary, because she had wrote a chapter in the book. And when the documentary was over, this 18 year old walked up to me and held my hand and said, I am so proud of you. Oh, yeah, blown away because I'm like wow. this little kid and he's saying telling me how proud of me he was and I'm like I yeah. like lost it right right and he said if you ever I heard you're doing this for men and I want to be in it that was wow it. yes okay yes. so 
I'm not going to ask you to tell me about the rest of the guys because I'm just going to be like, we need to schedule a second interview to get the rest of the guys. Right. Um, because I, yeah, that, yeah, I, I, we need to talk to Mr. Jabari. Um, yeah. I so, yeah, you um, really we do. Can definitely going to schedule that because I would like to, for, to talk to him, um, Abraham, Gene, Paul, and mm -hmm. um, make sure that we get the, all of everybody. Yeah. Um, to be able to um, be on the private room to talk and share their stories. So what's next? What's met? What's next, Miss Joan? Um, what's met next, uh, Dwan and Christopher? So I'm going to just say this right now, because I believe that Jarvis has a mission. And I'm, I'm, I meant to tell him this when we launched the book last week. Mm -hmm. But Jarvis is supposed to create a platform for men and help men to overcome some of the stigmas and the things that they hide inside uh, because of fear and shame. Because I believe that the reason why Jarvis went through what he went through was so that he can create this, this safe space for men. So Jarvis, know that you're supposed to be doing that, right? Whether it is a men's group or a men's Bible study or a meetup with men or something, but you have a mission to help men. That's why you went through all of that stuff. Um, Dewan, I love that you're doing the nonprofit. And I'm just kind of saying this, Tiffany, they, they can mm -hmm. add mm -hmm. afterwards. Right. But Dewan, um, DJ is still with you. He was your only child and he was taken for you, from you. Um, but I believe, and I've said this to you more than once, that I believe his life is still a gift although he's not physically here yes. and that you were purposed to really um, advocate for young people and their parents. It's not just the young people, it's the parents as well. And then Christopher, you have your whole book to write because that was just one chapter. You have your entire book to write, your whole book, and it, you could give it a, a different name other than Second Chances, but not only that. You have devotionals and journals that's going to come after your full book comes. I believe that all of these men have the opportunity now to create a legacy, a platform that they're purposed to create because of their stories and this book. It was courage. It was the will of God. It was the strength. God used me as the, um, the liaison to get these stories out. And I, and I, I want them to continue. Yes. Yes. Dwan, what do you, what do you think? What's, what's next for you? Um, what's next for me is, is getting the answer and getting answers that we deserve, you know, and I say we, as you know, my family and my community that, um, because when we lost DJ, it was, you know, mistaken identity. Mm. So getting getting the answers, you know, we won't get we won't get everything, but you know, my my goal and my purpose is is to get justice and make sure that, you know, the people that are responsible, you know, don't get a chance to do this to anybody else. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um mm. I would love to have you um, back on to, you know, to share your story more once you're able to do so. So please reach out to me um, and I will definitely um, connect with you. Are you on Facebook and Instagram and all of that jazz right now? <laughs> uh, I'm on Facebook. Okay. All right. We'll get everybody's um, uh, information so that people can start following you that are not already following you. Um, cause I definitely would love to have you on a future, um, episode of the private room as well as Jarvis, um, and Chris, Chris, I think you would be, um, awesome, um, with, uh, uh, talking on our, our men's panel, the King's table. I actually, I think all of you would, um, for different episodes. So hopefully you will be open to that as well. Um, Chris, what is next for you? Uh, <clears throat> main thing is to continue to advocate for change um, with the younger generation, the teenagers that my godfather supports with his uh, 
nonprofit organization, New Generations Inc. We go back into the community to work with at-risk youth to stop them from going down the path that I did. And even if they do, to let them know that there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Also, just to continue to push the image in the mirror three, um, this is something that is very vital to the changes in history for the black man or men, period. Just to let them know that you, you do have value and that you're just not no one-sided equation. And as Ms. Joan mentioned, to actually ink my full story and to put it out there. And lastly, uh, I partnered with one of the brothers from this anthology, Mr. Gene Johnson, and we're working on our podcast called The Two Angry Black Men. Mm -hmm. We're not angry in the literal sense, but we're speaking to how societies deal with us some circumstances to where we had to articulate our anger and not act on it. How we had to utilize fact and faith versus feelings and emotions to uh, relay our feelings or challenges in life. Nice, nice, nice. Um, when is your has your when is your podcast going to premiere? When is your first um, episode? Well, we were anticipating doing so a couple of weeks ago, but we realized that the book launch was happening. So we right. wanted to give full effort and focus to that. Right. And mm -hmm. as the smoke clears from, from that, we were going to push it. So I would say probably mid-April at latest. Okay. Okay. Well, I will be doing a, so I did a, um, a podcast takeover. We did um, that episode when I first started the private room. So before the private room, I had a very successful podcast called the Speak Up and Inspire series that only um, interview community leaders and advocates. So I wanted to do more and talk about more topics. So then I started the private room. Um, and so one of the first episodes, one of the first three episodes that I did was podcast um, host, because I wanted to give back to the podcast that's had me on their podcast to promote my book and um, my nonprofit and my advocacy and all that kind of stuff that I do. So we're going to be, I'm actually working on doing another podcast takeover um, to talk to other podcast hosts and um, creatives um, about their podcast so that we can support and market one another. So I will definitely reach out to you for that. Um, I was planning to do that sometime this summer. So I will definitely reach out to you. Um, I'm very big into networking and, um, you know, supporting other uh, creatives, other podcasts, advocates, and just other people in general. I think it's, we, we can't get anywhere without other people, um, no matter how hard we try. How hard we try to do things on our own, you can't do it by yourself. You have to have your village. You have to have that support. You have to have your network. Um, and that's that's the way you build. So um, I would love to have you on the next podcast takeover um, that I'm, I'm currently trying to schedule now. So I will make sure that I get all of your social media starting right now. Um, so everybody, please share your social media. Ms. Joan, start, start, start that so everybody can know how to find you um, especially those who are writing books, uh, have written a book, and you want to take it a step further. You don't want to just write your book. You want it to be something. You want it to represent something. And it, what, you know, we all want income. You put all that work into your book. You want to have some income coming in from your book, um, but then also making an impact with your book. So Ms. Um, Joan, tell us how we can find you on social media, website, all that good stuff. So on social media, I'm Joan Faxter Randall or Joan T. Randall, but to connect with me via um, my company, it's Victorious U Press. Nice. Um, and it's um, Victorious U Press on LinkedIn, Victorious U Press. I have a Facebook uh, page on Victorious U Press, Instagram, Victorious U Press. And I also have a, um, a group with about 1800 members called Books to Business and Beyond. Um, so it's a Facebook group. Okay. Um, all things books, the business and beyond. So nice, 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 nice. Okay. Um, Dwan, how can we find you? Um, Facebook, Dwan Field Sr. on Facebook. Got it. I'm making sure that I'm, are you on, you said you're on Facebook. You're not on Instagram. So can you repeat that one more time so I can make sure I got you? 
Dewan Fields Sr. Okay, got it. We put it in the chat too, Tiffany. Okay, got it. Dewan Fields Sr. I found you. There you are. And I see your handsome son there. Oh my goodness. He looks just like you. Goodness. Yeah, sure does. That is, that is you reincarnated. <laughs> Oh my goodness, he yeah. looks just like you. All right, I found you. I just sent you a friend request. Um, Christopher Leonard, tell us how can we find you on Facebook, Instagram, or whatever your um, your social media is. Uh, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Christopher W. Leonard. Got it, got it. All righty, so thank you um, all for coming on. I see that Jarvis had to jump off, but uh, Ms. Randall, can you give me uh, or tell us what Jarvis's social media is? Oh, no, Jarvis is here, he's here. Oh, he is? Oh, I didn't yeah. see you. Okay, I'm sorry. Maybe because I was sharing my screen, I couldn't see everybody. There you are, <laughs> been here talking, like you're not here and you were here all along. Okay, so um, Jarvis, tell us your social media so people know can um, connect with you. The easiest way to find me on IG and Facebook is just Jarvis Swanson. Got it. Got it. Jarvis Swanson. Okay. I am finding you right now. I think I found you. There you go. And you're sitting in your king's chair. I found you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I have said I've got some follow up stuff. Juan, I'm going to be um, connecting you with Mr. Michael Smith that I spoke of um, earlier. Christopher, I'm going to be inviting you for the podcast takeover. And Jarvis, I'm going to be inviting you to the King's Table because I would love to um, for you to connect with the uh, the men of the King's Table. And you, Ms. Uh, Randall, I would love to meet Miss Angie. So we got to get her back on here as well, as well as the, the part two so that we can meet the rest of the authors that wrote The Image in the Mirror part three. <laughs> I appreciate I you all. Yes. I appreciate you all for your time. You. Congratulations yeah. for that best selling yeah. book. Congratulations. That is a, a, a true honor, a true honor. And I appreciate you all for sharing your stories. I appreciate you taking the time to be on the private room with Tiffany. Um, I will be posting this on YouTube, sending y'all the link and all that great stuff so that y'all can um, share it as you as you like. Um, so again, thank you for coming on. This is Tiffany with The Private Room. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram, The Private Room with Tiffany. If you are interested in being on our platform, you have something to say, we wanna hear it, please reach out to me. You can reach out to my personal, um, Tiffany Sunshine Brown, or you can hit us on Instagram and Facebook and I will get back to you as soon as possible. The quickest way is to reach me on my personal, Tiffany Sunshine Brown. I'm on there all day, so I'll, I'll see you faster. Thank you, Ms. Joan, for sharing. Thanks so much. Thanks for having us. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. All right, see ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.